Hey y'all, uh, welcome to this edition of History and High Balls, Grandfather Mountain Highland Games. My name is Stacy, and I handle adult education here at the museum. So whenever you sign up to join us for one of these History and High Balls programs, you and I get to virtually spend the evening together learning about some incredible North Carolina places and people and what makes our state so special. If you enjoy tonight's program, uh, we invite you to head over to the museum's website at ncmuseumofhistory.org where you can learn more about our upcoming programs, exhibits, and digital resources. Uh, this is also where you can learn more information about joining our North Carolina Museum of History Associates. Our Associates and Foundation provide crucial funding and support to the museum, which in addition to many other things, helps make programming like this evening's event possible. We would like to also thank those of you who donated funds towards this evening's program. Uh, we continue to do our best to keep our programs free to attend but there are costs associated with keeping our series going. And we just wanna thank you all so much for your continued generous support of the museum. A few quick housekeeping items for this evening. We ask that you please keep your mics muted throughout the entirety of the program. And to please type any questions that you have for our guest speaker into the chat function located at the bottom center of your screen. At the end of the program, our intern Savannah will ask our speaker as many of your questions as time allows. So it's my honor to introduce and welcome this evening's speaker, um, Stephen Quillen, president of Grandfather Mountain Highland Games. So Steve, I'm gonna turn the floor over to you. Welcome, thank you for joining us tonight. Just one minute, I'm sorry, you're muted, Steve. Hold on just one minute. Did that do it? That did it. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, the the uh, audience may prefer that I stay muted. Who knows? Um, I, uh, <laughs> I'm, I appreciate very much the opportunity to, uh, to come before the group tonight and to talk about the Grandfather Mountain Island Games. I uh, am, by way of introduction, I'm the 11th president of the Grandfather Mountain Island Games. I first came to the games in 1968 with my parents. I was 15 and the next year I could drive. So I came back and I've, I've, been, uh, I've been ever since. Uh, my wife uh, has, has never missed a year. My children have never missed a year. My grandchildren have never missed a year. So the Grandfather Mountain Highland Games is very much a part of our family's uh, summer activities. And uh, we have, uh, have, have really enjoyed our time at Grandfather Mountain. Uh, Grandfather Mountain is a very, very special place. Um, our games are held at McRae Meadow, which is a naturally occurring meadow on the side of Grandfather Mountain at uh, somewhere around the elevation 4,400, which is about 400 feet higher than the top of the highest mountain in Scotland. So it's very much a Highland Games at, uh, at McRae Meadow. Um, it is one of the most special places on earth. I think anybody that uh, attends the games would attest to that and agree with me on that. The property is owned by the Grandfather Mountain Stewardship Foundation. Um, and they are very much caretakers of that special little corner. The Stewardship Foundation does a wonderful job with the management of the property. They do a wonderful job period there in the midst of a, of a building program for a major educational building that's set to open. I believe the date is June 23rd of this summer. And so I really encourage everyone that's watching to get up and, and see what those folks are doing. It's, it's going to be really, really special. And uh, we, at the games, enjoy a wonderful relationship with the Grandfather Mountain Stewardship Foundation. Just this past December, um, we extended our agreement for the games to be held at McRae Meadow by another 20 years. And that's a, that's a real milestone achievement uh, and an important achievement for the Highland Games. Um, so <clears throat> let's start at the Highland Games in the beginning. Uh, the games were founded in 1956 
but the work for the games began in 1954. Um, the games had two strong personalities, two very capable individuals that were co-founders. Agnes McCray Morton, uh, people may recognize Mrs. Morton as Hugh Morton's mother, um, owners of the mountain. Um, and uh, she split her time in those days between Wilmington and the, the Linville area here at the, at the mountain. And Donald Francis McDonald, who lived in Charlotte and was a newspaper writer in Charlotte for the Charlotte News. In 1954, Donald McDonald took a trip to Scotland. He wanted to visit his homeland and, and find the roots from, from his, uh, his ancestral roots. And he wound up at the Highland Games at Braemar. Braemar is the games that are routinely attended by the queen and her family. And uh, Donald said that the games program was about as thick as the Charlotte phone book. He had a great time at Braemar and he brought home that program. And when he got home, he wrote several feature articles in the Charlotte News about the games at Braemar and his time in Scotland and so forth. Mrs. Morton read those articles. She had long held a vision of a Scottish gathering uh, and she wanted to do that at McRae Meadow. And uh, so she contacted Donald and the two of them put their heads together and began planning in earnest in 1955 for the first Grandfather Mountain Highland Games, which would be held the subsequent year in 1956. Um, they needed to raise a crowd of helpers. Uh, they were able to do that. They needed to raise money. They were able to do that um, through a variety of ways. One of the most interesting ways was that uh, Donald McDonald booked the Black Watch Regimental Pipe Band, who was touring the United States in 1955, uh, he, he booked them to the Charlotte Coliseum at a cost of about $4,000. Um, Donald didn't have $4,000, but he had a pipe band and he had a booking at the Charlotte Coliseum. And so every day at lunch, he would put on a kilt and go out on the street in Charlotte and sell tickets. And one ticket sold another and two tickets sold five others and the word of mouth kept increasing. And after all, North Carolina is the home of a lot of Scottish people and uh, are people of Scottish descent. And he wound up selling out the concert in the Charlotte Coliseum. And the money that was earned from that um, was was a bunch of the seed money that went into the first games. Um, so the first games were held August 19th, 1956. That was a Sunday. And that was done to commemorate the gathering of uh, Prince Charlie at Glenfinnan in Scotland when he raised his standard on August 19th, 1745 to begin the Jacobite Rising of 1745. And so um, they, they held the games, they put together a, a basic complement of bands and pipers and Highland dancers and so forth. The, the um, pipe band, or the, excuse me, the high school band from the Laurenburg High School, the Laurenburg Fighting Scots, which was a kilted band in 1956, came up, so they had a brass band in kilts. They had a pipe band from Washington, D.C., and then they had pipers from Savannah and Charleston, both of whom have a uh, long connection with Scottish, uh, Scottish immigration, and they were able to recruit significantly from that area. And so the first games featured uh, many of the same things that we still feature today. They had a Highland dance competition. They had solo piping competitions. They had Highland athletics. They threw the caber and the hammer. And um, they, they had Gaelic song, Gaelic song instruction. They had um, a church service. The games was held on Sunday. So they had a, they had a, a Scottish church service. And the upshot is 
that they had expected that they would draw somewhere between 300 and 1500 people. The newspaper articles that were written as a follow-up to the, to the event say that they drew a crowd of 10,000. Neither Mrs. Morton nor Donald McDonald ever represented that the, that the first crowd was 10,000, but it did far exceed their expectations. And as Donald used to say, I think we hit a nerve. Um, they came back in 1957 and held the event on the same Sunday in, in August and drew an even larger crowd. Um, we have programs, uh, I'll show you here, and I'm, I'm giving this talk from our, our Highland Games office in Lindell, North Carolina, and we, we've got programs from the early years. This is the 1956 program, and uh, here is the here's the program for the first games. It's a single sheet, folded. Says at the bottom, if you need to use the bathroom, go to the Shell Station at the bottom of the hill. Um, so I uh, I don't know whether they outdistanced their parking and outdistance their food services and so forth, but I'm pretty sure that they certainly outdistance their bathroom facilities by the end of 1957. And so in 1958, the games moved to a two-day basis, Saturday and Sunday, and they moved from the third Sunday in August to the second full weekend in July. And the games has remained on the second full weekend of July um, ever since. Um, the Games has uh, kept to the original vision um, that was outlined. I told you that Agnes McRae Morton had always envisioned a gathering, a Scottish gathering. The official name of the Grandfather Mountain Highland Games is the Grandfather Mountain Highland Games and Gathering of Scottish Clans. Grandfather Mountain is all about the clans. We have lots of other events. We have had lots of other events and so forth. But at the heart of the games at Grandfather Mountain um, are the clans and the family societies that turn out in support of their, their families and their Scottish connections. Grandfather Mountain is the oldest games in the South. We're not the oldest games in the United States by any means. Uh, Detroit's much older. Uh, the people of Pleasanton, California claim to be much older, although for the first hundred years, that was sort of a family picnic. But be that as it may, um, we are also not anywhere near the largest island games in the United States. We don't have the room. What we are is the largest gathering of Scottish clans and family societies on the planet, anywhere in the world. Um, this year we will have, uh, I haven't actually counted them up, but it'll be 110, 115 uh, societies on the field. Uh, and that is a, a massive uh, gathering of Scottish families. And so people who come to Grandfather Mountain um, come with the expectation that they will find some sort of clan tent, some sort of family presence in those, in those tents that fit somewhere in their family. And the, North Carolina's got such a strong connection to Scotland from the immigration and so forth that if you've been a North Carolina, a North Carolinian for you know three or four generations, the chances of you having some some Scottish ancestry are really, really high. And so we, uh, one of the things that we do is we have a tent uh, as you come in the main entrance immediately to the left that says, find your clan. And so we have six people in that tent all the time helping folks with their, um, uh, you know, they'll talk to them about who your grandmother was or something and they'll help direct you to the, to the right tent. So the, the Grandfather Mountain Highland Games at the very core, the very heart of the games are all about the clans. Um, that's a special part of the games for me. I was the uh, president of the Clan McLaren Society for six years, and I ran the Clan McLaren tent at Grandfather Mountain for, I don't know, 
maybe 20 or 25 years. And so um, one of the things that I miss as president is that I don't get to spend much time in the Klan tent. And so you make wonderful friends and really strong connections in those, in those Klan tents. Uh, at Grandfather Mountain, you will find the family that you choose rather than the family that you were born with. And um, those, the, the relationships and the friendships and so forth that you form as a, as a consequence of that are, are really long lasting, really, really important. Our, uh, if, if we talk a little bit about the, the growth of the Grandfather Mountain Highland Games from the early years to now, I think that uh, one of the things that, that's really important uh, is that the games has at Grandfather Mountain is among the most traditional Highland Games in the world. The events that we have are very, very narrowly focused on Highland Games that you would have seen in Scotland 75 years ago, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, the traditional Highland athletic events. The athletes at Grandfather Mountain, the professional athletes are invited. The amateur athletes are pre-qualified. And so um, we do that. We, we don't have a lot of room. And so we can't have a monstrous field of athletes, but we can have really, really high quality athletics. And so that's what we that's what we aim for at Grandfather Mountain in all of our contests, not just athletics, but Highland Dance. We host the Atlantic Open Championships for Highland Dancing. And so we will draw competitors routinely from from Scotland, from New Zealand, from Australia, from Canada, from Washington State, from Minnesota. Uh, you know, it's a it's a really, really uh, broad mix of Highland dancers, really, really top end dancing. Our uh, our piping uh, is uh, solo only. We have never had band competition at Grandfather, and we won't. Um, one of the reasons is that uh, one of the one of the conditions of our founding was that we wouldn't have pipe band competition because we just don't have the room for it. So we have invited bands and we have very excellent solo piping competitions. One of the piping competitions that we have at Grandfather Mountain is set on a stage. Um, we have an announcer. Um, the judge will explain to you um, what, he's, what he's listening for when he judges. The pipers will introduce the tunes that they're gonna play. And uh, that's one of the things that's very unique to Grandfather Mountain in that the audience can have a lot of insight into what's in the contest. And, and we're, we're very uh, uh, strong on trying to educate people. We have a, an event called the Scottish Cultural Village, which is a, a tent that holds 200 people. And we routinely have 220 people or so in for a series of informative lectures. Um, some of them are historical, some of them are about Scottish clothing, some of them are about uh, the innards of a bagpipe, uh, you know, all sorts of a wide, wide mixture of topics. Um, and uh, those, those lectures are really, really strongly attended because people get to go down and, and hear, the, hear the truth. There's no, no, no misty, uh, uh, romance in the stories we just put out the facts and we talk about the 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 actual migration patterns that occurred in the in the United States from the Scottish immigrants or any number of of uh, important topics that we handle down there and um, that's a that's a thing that's very unique to Grandfather Mountain um, I told you earlier that in 1956 they had Gaelic song we still have a Gaelic tent We'll have one in 2022. We are possibly the only Highland Games in the country left with the Gallic tent. Um, Ligonier in Pennsylvania used to have one. I do not know whether they still have one or not. I hope they do, um, but we certainly do. And um, we have Scottish fiddling. We have 
Scottish Harpers. We have um, the uh, Celtic entertainers, both traditional and Celtic rock. Um, Celtic rock's a new addition to Grandfather about 25 years or so now, which we think of at Grandfather Mountain as a new addition. Um, but those are those are things that are unique to, to or are, are present at Grandfather Mountain. They're not all unique to Grandfather Mountain, but many of them are uh, are still unique to Grandfather Mountain, or at least originated at Grandfather Mountain. One of the things that we do at Grandfather Mountain that uh, is is really really important is we allow on-site camping, and our campers are able to come for a period of a few days before the games until the Monday after the games, and those campers come and, you know, they enjoy the games and they also enjoy the camaraderie that they're able to have within the campground. The campgrounds have these little village areas that they've created. There's Gordonville and Mac Village and uh, these, these different uh, uh, Mead Hall, different, different places that they these families come and they, they spend their vacation time each year. Again, part of what I was talking about, these are families of choice, perhaps not families of blood, but families of choice. And they feel, they, they refer to themselves and they refer to each other as their mountain family. And that's a thing that's very special at Grandfather Mountain. And uh, it's, it's really something that uh, the people that come to Grandfather Mountain and do camp absolutely cherish. And it is uh, a, a wonderful thing. The trip through the, the campground in the midst of the games will really give a person a, a, a great sense of the vibe that exists, the, the cooperation and so forth that exists in, uh, in, in the campground. Another place that um, you'll pick up a really good vibe at Grandfather Mountain is on Clan Row. We have facing tents, and as I said, we've got about 115 societies. Um, and within each of those tents uh, are, are people who exhibit kinship, they're kindred, they're, they're of the same family. But at Grandfather Mountain, there's care exhibited from one family to the next. So there's this phenomenon that I refer to as clanship that occurs at Grandfather Mountain. I'm fortunate to have been to 26 different Highland games in my life, um, most of them in the United States, but, uh, but also Canada and uh, Scotland. And I have never seen that clanship uh, exhibited at, at, at other games to any degree that approaches what we have at Grandfather Mountain. And culturally, uh, that's a thing that I'm very, very proud of. And as I said, I know that's real. I ran a tent at Grandfather Mountain for a long time. And there's, there's, there's no question that that's a, a, a true part of the, of the spirit and the core of the, the Grandfather Mountain Highland Games. Um, Grandfather Mountain Highland Games has been at the fore of um, Highland Games in the United States in terms of the presentation for a long time. There are many things that, grandfather, that started at the Grandfather Mountain Highland Games that have now been exported to other Highland Games, uh, Southeast, but, uh, but nationwide, and even, even across the pond to Scotland. Um, uh, for example, um, the Parade of Tartans, which is our signature event on Sunday, we send out representatives from each of the participating uh, clan and family societies to march. And we simply ask that you wear tartan and we want you to go out and represent your families. That is the single most photographed event year after year after year in the Scottish American Highland game world. It is a tremendous event. Um, there's a good bit of pomp and circumstance with it, and uh, people are very proud to march. And you can just, uh, as, as I stand and take the, the clans in review, um, you can just see them beaming. And I mean, people are so proud and pleased to be in that 
and that parade. And so that started at Grandfather Mountain. We have a Thursday night torchlight ceremony that we call Calling of the Clans. And about dark, each of the family societies will select a single representative. He will go on the field with a lighted torch and declare his family present. And so you'll hear the McDougals are here. The Bruces are here. And it is a powerful, powerful ceremony. I have listened to it, um, you know, 50 something times and it just, I still get chill bumps. I love the thing, it's great. Um, that came from Grandfather Mountain. Um, Grandfather Mountain did not invent the kirking of the tartan. The kirking of the tartan ceremony was started in a church in Washington, D.C. in 1948, but Grandfather Mountain brought it to a Highland Games, and they did so in 1956, and we continue to have a kirking of the tartan, a blessing of the tartans that is part of the Sunday morning worship. Um, so the societies will send a person out with their tartan banner, and they will stand uh, below the below the worship platform, and then uh, and then parade off as their tartans are blessed. Um, again, very special ceremony. Um, the in the athletic events, the tossing of the sheaf, S A G A F. The first time I came to the games, I thought they were saying sheep, but fortunately, it's a it's it's a, a sack of hay rather than a sheep. Uh, but that came to the United States, to Grandfather Mountain first. That was, that was brought over from Scotland, so it wasn't invented at Grandfather Mountain. But it was, it was put on the field at Grandfather Mountain before any other games. And that's a really high-profile profile event for the, uh, for the games. Um, the, uh, the games enjoys, uh, at, at this point, the games enjoys a – really full calendar. So we begin Thursday afternoon with a picnic and we, we proceed to the torchlight ceremony Thursday night about dark. In between there is our hill climb called the Bear, which is, which is run. That's run from the intersection at Linville to the tip top of the mountain. And except for the loop they make around the track at Grandfather Mountain, every foot of it is uphill. And uh, just a just a brutal race, um, so popular that the you know we get seven hundred entrants in something like three minutes when it's opened up for for people to sign up, um, and uh, we we follow up the the torchlight ceremony then concludes Thursday night, and then Friday morning we open and have a conventional Highland Games, um, so. Uh, Many, many of the games in the United States are run on Saturday and Sunday at Grandfather Mountain. We have a full Friday, a full Saturday, and a full Sunday. And we have gone to that format because we can't make more room. Um, we're on top of a mountain. Um, I've told you that we're at, at McRae Meadow, which is a very environmentally sensitive area. And so we, we can't make more room. So we've had to make more time. And um, that's been very successful for the games, and um, and and has 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 worked out well. Um, we have all of the events uh, that are that are featured on the typical Saturday and Sunday are also part of what we do on Friday. So there is Highland athletics, there is Highland dance, um, and and sheep herding, and all the things that we do are also present on Friday. Um, that's uh, the the largest day of the games, of course, are are on Saturday. Um, that has always been so, and remains remains so. Um, and the uh, we have concerts in Friday night and Saturday night. The Friday night concert is a Celtic rock concert. The Saturday night concert on the field is a traditional music uh, concert with various jam sessions and so forth in it. And both those events are very popular. Um, Sunday is what we call family day at the games. We have kilted races where people from clan tents come in and 
an enter a mile race or a 440 race or whatever. And we have clan tug of war competitions and, you know, plan this and plan that. So that a lot of the events are, are, are really styled to, to the family events. We also have on Sunday, a quartet piping competition. Quartet piping competitions used to be more prevalent in the United States. We don't see them anymore. Um, they're, they're a wonderful competition where four pipers get together and work out very complicated harmonies and so forth. And so any of you that can come to the games, I really encourage you to go down to what we call the beaten stage and listen to the quartet piping on Sunday. That's, uh, that's, that's a really important part of what we do at Grandfather Mountain. So those are, those are a bit about the games, the actual Highland games themselves. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about why the games exist. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, we exist to award academic scholarships to Avery County, we are in Avery County in, in Linville, North Carolina, to Avery County high school graduates who wish to continue their education. And we, we award scholarships every year. They are four-year scholarships. And um, of course, there are standards that must be met in order to have those scholarships renewed, but they're nonetheless four-year commitments on behalf of the games. We talk a lot in the community about our academic scholarships. We talk a lot in the community about what we do for Avery County. We spend in Avery County if we can. We, we try to put as much goodwill in Avery County as we possibly can. And we try to put our money where our goodwill is in Avery County. So we, we try to direct spending in, in Avery County. The North Carolina Department of Tourism says our economic footprint each year is somewhere between three and four million dollars. Now, a lot of that goes to places that are not Avery County because there are not that many motel rooms and so forth in Avery County, but a big part of it is that the games are a big part of the, the basic revenue picture of, of Avery County and our support of the school system and the students and the scholarships and so forth is very important. What we don't talk a lot about that we do at Grandfather Mountain though is the support of the Scottish arts. There are a number of schools that are not run by Grandfather Mountain but are run in conjunction with Grandfather Mountain. There is a Gaelic instruction week, a school that's, that's here in the area. There is a uh, Scottish Country Dance School, the Blue Ridge School of Scottish Country Dance is, is run for a week or possibly two weeks here. The North American Academy of Piping and Drumming has been here for over 50 years. There is a um, Highland Dance School, the School of Scottish Arts Highland Dance School that's here. Um, there are just these these things that are done in conjunction with the games that are very important. And we directly support as many of those things as we can, some with um, in-kind gifts, many of them by awarding scholarships to those activities. And so that's a big part of what, what we do at Grandfather Mountain. Um, and I encourage all the listeners to spend some time and Google those schools. Take a look at the, um, the Blue Ridge Scottish Country Dance School. Uh, they hold that over at Appalachian State in Boone. And uh, take, take a look at those things. Take a look at the North American Academy of Piping and Drumming and see what they, see what they have to offer. These things are all a big part of the heritage of North Carolina. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud that so many of them call this area and the Grandfather Mountain Highland Games home. And, and uh, we, we work hard to support those as, as best we can. There's another group called Highland Echoes, um, and we provide a great deal of direct support to Highland Echoes. Highland Echoes has an 
international stage show for um, Scottish entertainment. Um, they will be uh, uh, putting that show on during the week of the Highland Games at a theater in Boone. But the thing that we support from, from Highland Echoes is a program that they have called Scotland in the Class. And that is a, an enrichment program that's developed for elementary school children. Um, and the, the program is fully developed. The teachers can subscribe to the program and they get all their handouts done and all their projects are all developed. And it is all about teaching elementary children, uh, especially in North Carolina, Virginia, and South Carolina about the, the Scottish roots of, of those states and the immigrants that, that came to those states. And uh, so please take a look at that. That is, uh, that's really important. Um, and, and, and we do that because it's important. We also do it because we full well recognize that we are sowing seeds. That program is sowing seeds for people to continue to come to the games long after our current 20 year uh, agreement expires and, and they're on the third 20 year agreement past, past that one. Um, people who were at Grandfather Mountain as children are still at, Grand, at the Grandfather Mountain Highland Games as adults, as grandparents, as great grandparents, but more importantly, perhaps their children are there and their children's children come, come to the games. And it's very much uh, an important part of their life, their family, their history, and the story that, uh, that, that their family will have to tell to those that come after. So um, that uh, pretty much concludes my remarks. I'd be glad to take questions. Um, this is a cocktail party, right? Am, am I allowed to have a cocktail? Of course you're allowed. <laughs> Okay, hi, I'm Savannah, I'm the intern. I'll be asking some questions. Um, so if somebody wants to know if you only have one day to attend the games, what day would be the best day to attend to have the full experience? When people ask me that, I always say, <clears throat> excuse me, I always say Sunday. But again, I came out of a clan tent and I'm all about those clan events. The big profile day, of course, is Saturday. And if you were only going to come to Grandfather Mountain one time, on one bucket list day, come Saturday. Okay, you've said that you've been to over 26 different Highland games. So other than the games at Grandfather Mountain, which one of those was your favorite? My second favorite Highland games is the Loch Norman Highland games in Charlotte. Um, I was just down there last week. Um, they've had a they've had a little a rough little go down there. They they were rained out almost practically in 2019. They followed that with a 2020 cancellation because of COVID, and a 2021 cancellation because of COVID. They are held in April. Uh, Grandfather Mountains held in July, and in 2021 we we were able to profit from a big dip in the COVID numbers in, in 2021. And uh, we, were, we were allowed to stage our event, Lock Norman wasn't. Uh, but I really, I really like that games a lot. Um, there's Stone Mountain in Atlanta, Georgia. It's a, it's a great festival. Uh, there's a great festival in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, there are Highland games all over the place. Um, but uh, um, none of them are, are grandfather. So I've been kind of thinking about the name of Grandfather Mountain. Do you happen to know how it got its name? And does that relate to all the Scottish people that immigrated there? No, it's a Cherokee name. Um, okay, wow, yeah. I don't, um, it's, the, it's the English translation of the Cherokee, Cherokee word for Grandfather Mountain. And there is the profile view at Grandfather Mountain where 
where you can see the 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 brow, the eyebrows, the nose, the beard. Okay, Rebecca is asking about the estimated population of Scottish ancestry in North Carolina. Do you happen to know that? And if North Carolina has the largest Scottish ancestry in the U.S.? Um, the answer is yes. North Carolina does have the largest Scottish ancestry in the U.S. Um, when I last looked, there are about 5 million people in Scotland. Um, North Carolina had um, more than 5 million people, well more than 5 million people of Scottish ancestry in the state. In colonial times, before the, before the Revolutionary War broke out, um, uh, North Carolina was about one third German, one third English, one third Scottish. Um, and, and that is uh, without counting the people of color. Um, I'm just counting the, the, the free citizens of, of North Carolina. Someone is specifically asking about how the shuttle service works during the games. So they must be planning to come. Um, we have four shuttle lots. Three of them are operated by Cross North Volunteer Fire Department. Two of them are in Linville. I mean, excuse me, one is in Linville and two are in Newland. And you go there and park and pay the Cross North Fire Department and they'll put you on a bus and take you straight up to the games. There is also a shuttle lot at Caldwell Community College in Boone. And that shuttle service is actually operated by the games. And so you can go online and prepay for that shuttle. You can't prepay for the Cross North Fire Department, but you can prepay for the game shuttle. And, uh, or you can pay in person when you ride it and, uh, and we bring you to the games. Do you have anything in particular planned for this year's games? Like is anything special happening or is it pretty traditional from year to year? We have a thing that I think is, uh, is very, very special happening. Um, our chieftain of the games, our honored guest, if you will, is Richard Baird. Um, Richard Baird is in Aberdeenshire, Scotland, and he will be installed as the commander of Clan Baird at Grandfather Mountain in a formal ceremony. Um, we have never had such of a thing happen at Grandfather Mountain before. Um, Richard went through the, the process that the, the Lord Lyon um, who is in charge of Scottish heraldry and, and so forth. Um, he went through the family convention and he was fully vetted and he was selected. And he decided to, to come to Grandfather Mountain to take his installation in front of his, his people, his bears, um, because Grandfather Mountain means that much to his bears. They were founded, that their society was founded at Grandfather Mountain. Um, Richard was to do that in 2021, but the travel restrictions uh, prevented anybody from coming over, so he couldn't come. Richard Baird held that ceremony back an additional year to wait till he could get here in 2022. That's how much he wants to do that at Grandfather Mountain. That will be done Sunday at one o'clock, pardon me, on the, uh, on the worship platform. And I'll be there. I've never seen anything like that. And I, I just can't, I just can't wait. I think that's tremendously important, both for the Bairds and Grandfather Mountain Islanders. So do you think so many Scottish people settled in North Carolina because the geography is a little bit comparable to the geography of Scotland with the mountains? No. <laughs> they settled in North Carolina because they were given land. They were recruited to, to come here. Um, the, the earliest migration of Scottish Highlanders in North Carolina was in the Cape Fear, Cape Fear River Valley, Fayetteville, the Sand Hills. Looked nothing like Glen Cove. But they got 400 acres. And they weren't going to live long enough to get 400 acres in Scotland. 
<laughs> Gina wants to know it, how far ahead camping should be booked and is it tent camping? Um, we have tent camping and we have uh, uh, wheeled vehicles. Um, the ticket pressure on Grandfather Mountain has been extraordinary. Um, our, we put our camping up for sale for our wheel vehicles on uh, January 5th or something, I don't remember, and sold out in two days. Um, we, we put Chieftain Patrons packages up October 15th, 2021, and we had previously, the most we had sold in, in before the, the turn of the year, before the new year, was 35. This year we sold 128. We sold every one we had by the 10th of September of, of December. And um, I keep saying to people, we could sell buckets of black mud at Grandfather Mountain right now if we had a bucket to put it in. The ticket pressure is just tremendous. The games is not going to be any larger than it ever has been, right? We've only got so much room. That's the point that I keep trying to make to people. But the sales. The pace of the sales is very far ahead of where it has been in previous years. So we must be doing something right. What year was your largest attendance and how big was it? Was it the first year back in the 50s or has it been more recent? Uh, our largest year was 2019. We set attendance records um, six of the past seven years. Um, last year, we attempted to run the games at 80% of what we had in 2019, because that's the agreement that I made with the state of North Carolina. And so we did the best we could to depress attendance. Um, we did depress attendance, but I think we exceeded the 80%. There just wasn't any way to, any way to hold it back. Rebecca is asking if you know when Scottish families settled to North Carolina, did they travel with many families or was it separate? Um, the biggest um, early migration of Scottish families was in 1739 from Argyle, which predated the Jacobite Rebellion of 1745. There had been a, a, a Jacobite Rebellion of 1715 there had been a smaller one in the 1720s. And um, there was also a lot of economic pressure put on the Highlands. The clan systems were outliving their usefulness with respect to agriculture and, and so forth. They had a, a system called a run rig system in the, in the clans in the Highlands where um, there was property that, that you lived on, your tack it was called, but the rest of the land was communal and you had the use of it for a year, but you weren't encouraged to improve the land because of the next year your next door neighbor got it. And so if you spent your year tilling in horse manure to enrich the land, it was his crops that benefited the next year. And so that clan system was putting a lot of stress on the highlands. So there was a, a big migration in, uh, in 1739, and then there were other migrations that, are, that occurred later. Um, the governor of North Carolina uh, was Joseph Martin before the Revolutionary War broke out, and he was giving land as fast as he could through grants to try to recruit um, uh, Scots to North Carolina. Martin was a Scot himself, and he wanted to recruit Scots to North Carolina because he thought the old clan alliances uh, would, would hold forth. And he was also asking for an oath of fealty. So you would get 400 acres in turn for signing a piece of paper that said you would support uh, the, the king. And uh, as it turned out, those alliances weren't held and it all kind of, it all kind of went to pot for him and he had to leave and go to New York. But that was, that was behind a lot of the a lot of the recruitment. So, do you have a favorite event that you absolutely cannot miss every year that you make a number one priority to witness? The clan tug of war. 
I imagine that gets pretty wild. I have three clan tug of war trophies on my fireplace. And uh, I didn't pull in any of them. I just yelled at the guys that were pulling. So is that teams of people? And it's, it's not just mm -hmm. one, one v one, but it's no, two no. different families. Oh my it's gosh. Teams of people. So the McLarens would pull against the Douglases or so forth. Um, we went out to pull one year and the Douglases had cheerleaders. Okay, I think that was the last of our questions, but thank you very much. I'm a history major and I'm actually specializing in Great Britain, so this was great. I include Scotland in there, so this was amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I, um, uh, Grandfather Mountain Highland Games are arguably, um, at this point in our history, we're arguably the most famous Highland Games in the world. Um, when we invite chiefs from Scotland to visit. Um, they will tell you that their, their number one coveted invitation is Grandfather Mountain because there's so many clan societies there. And a lot of them will tell you that their second favorite is Grandfather Mountain. And some of them will tell you their third favorite is Grandfather Mountain. So we are, we enjoy um, uh, a, a special place uh, around the planet in terms of the of, of Highland Games, and um, we're very respectful of that. We're we're very aware that um, that we're a trendsetter in this in this thing that we call Highland Games, and uh, we try to be responsible and we try to to care for the legacy of the people that that went before us, both our family ancestors and the people that went before us to. Uh, to run these Highland Games. So the Highland Games that, that I look after today looks very much like it did in 1959. And it's gonna to continue to do that, at least as long as I'm associated. Thank you so much, Steve, for this incredible look at the Grandfather Mountain Highland Games. Just a reminder to all of y'all, um, the games happen from July 7th to the 10th in our beautiful North Carolina mountains. Um, I dropped the web address to the Highland Games in the chat a few times for just in case you missed it. Their website is gmhg.org. So head over there and check out all the offerings and get your tickets. Um, thank you all for joining us this evening. We hope to see you at our next History and High Balls, Somerset Place, happening Thursday, April 28th at 7 p.m. Um, in the meantime, have a lovely evening. Thanks again, Steve. It was amazing. Come find me on the mountain. <laughs> Take care, you guys. Have a good night.